Welcome to video 191 in series 3 and now I'm going to write the NPC apply relations script. Okay, so it's now time for the NPC to recognize, well, to take into account the change in NPC factions. So let's create a new C sharp script, call it NPC underscore apply relations and open it up. I'll start with three variables. And they are private game manager, NPC relations master, NPC relations master, private NPC state pattern, NPC state pattern, private NPC master, NPC master. No start and update, so I'll just get rid of those. And inside of set initial references, I have NPC state pattern is equal to get component npc state pattern npc master is equal to get component npc master game object game manager is equal to game object dot find game manager npc relations master is equal to game manager dot get component game manager npc relations master okay now i'll start writing the methods so i'll start with the last one and that is void check that my follow target is still an ally and pass in a string it's an array enemy tags so i've written a comment there for example if the player becomes an enemy to this npc's faction then they should no longer follow the player as their leader so let's go through the code then so basically, you know, if the player is an enemy and their former allies were following them, then uh, obviously they shouldn't follow anymore. And that applies to other uh, NPCs as well. Uh, so inside of that, if NPC state pattern dot my follow target is null, then return. There's nothing to do here. Otherwise, if enemy tags dot length is greater than zero for each string e tag in enemy tags, if NPC state pattern dot my follow target dot compare tag E tag npc state pattern dot my follow target is equal to null break so that's it so we're just checking the enemy tags that um, are present and uh, if any match the follow target it means that our follow target is now which was once our ally is now an enemy so we'll drop that as a follow target okay next method to type in is void apply site layers pass in string and array friendly tags and i've written the comment so that allies of the npc will not block their vision so when you have uh, new allies because of dynamic factions they should the site layers of the npc should be updated otherwise it's not accurate anymore and their potentially new allies could be blocking their vision so npc state pattern dot site layers is equal to layer mask dot name to layer everything so i'm just saying to begin with just set the site layers to everything if friendly tags dot length greater than zero for each string f tag in friendly tags int temp int is equal to layer mask dot name to layer f tag npc state pattern dot site layers is equal to this tilde uh, one bit shift temp int and this or as well uh, one in bit shift left uh, again layer mask dot name to layer and ignore ray cast so what this is going to do is it's going to invert from everything to just have each of these as they are flagged so each of these temp ints they'll become uh, they'll be converted to a one and also ignore raycast will be put in there so uh that is uh well th so that you know it doesn't detect things that should be ignored okay so i got another method to do another method to write yes it is very funny looking code but uh i guess just that's just how it is and even after so long of writing this sort of code it still makes no sense to me i just write it and just know what i'm writing all right, next is void set my relations. So finally, let's do this. If npc relations master dot npc relations array is null, then return. Continuing, for each npc relations array, npc array in npc relations master dot npc relations array, 
if transform.compare tag, npc array dot npc faction, npc state pattern. So what this is doing is it's going into the game manager, looking at the npc relations array, that npc array. And uh, from that, it's just finding out, uh, all right, so this, you know, npc has a tag of say friendly. So it's just looking is which entry matches that tag. And once it finds that, all oh, right, then that it knows then that that's our set of data. So let's apply it to this npc. So npc state pattern dot my friendly layers is equal to npc array dot my friendly layers npc state pattern dot my enemy layers is equal to npc array dot my enemy layers npc state pattern dot my friendly tags is equal to npc array dot my friendly tags npc state pattern dot my enemy tags is equal to npc array dot my enemy tags then run the method apply site layers pass in npc state pattern dot my friendly tag so that way the site layers will be set up on our npc in the state pattern script which is good and then check that my follow target is still an ally and pass in npc state pattern dot my enemy tags finally npc master dot call event npc relations change and this event here, which I'm calling, is important for uh, gun input script, so the NPC gun input script. So I just want to have a look at that, what that was for again. And I see that is for applying the layers to damage on the gun itself. So once uh, this event is called, the gun will pick it up and will apply uh, the appropriate layers for damaging. Okay, we're not finished yet. We've just got a little bit more to add. The methods are done. So inside on enable, write this code, set initial references, then npc relations master dot event update npc relations everywhere plus equal set my relations. So subscribe to that event basically. And then invoke set my relations. Of course, make sure the spelling in case is the same, comma, after 0.1 f seconds. And that is so that the npc state pattern on the npc has had sufficient, uh, sorry, rather the NPC array on the game manager has had time to be set up in the first place. So then the NPC state pattern can retrieve that data. And finally, in on disable, NPC relations master dot event update NPC relations everywhere minus equal set my relations. So I'll just scroll through that slowly, have a look at it, and yeah, it's all complete. Good. So we can save that and go to the NPC uh, prefabs. So my prefabs, NPC, and attach that to each of them. So apply relations. There we go. Good. So I'll save that. And now we should see that uh, automatically uh, set up properly. So if I just use this as an example, as an example, set the site layers to nothing and the enemy layers to nothing and then hit play. Let's see what happens. All right, there we go. So the uh, ranged ally gets set up properly. So it is now working. The system is working. You do have dynamic factions. Uh, at this point, but uh, there's still a bit more work to do. We need a UI so that we can actually just look at it and see it easily. But uh, you do, the basics are now here, and you have a dynamic faction system, and we just have a couple more videos to just tidy it all up. All right, so that's good stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.